Hey there, I am back with another deck review, and today I'm going to be looking at Fulton's Chinatown Playing Cards Game of Death Edition from designer Brad Fulton and the Dan and Day Playing Card Company, otherwise known as Art of Play. Now, this is a bit of a throwback deck. Uh, Fulton has designed a lot of different decks looking at kind of fictional casinos uh, and other establishments. Uh, this particular one, unlike his classic series with the Ace Fulton's Casino, looks at Chinatown and goes with a kind of a different inspiration with these. Uh, specifically, the deck was inspired by the legendary martial artist Bruce Lee. He's synonymous with this yellow and black jumpsuit. Uh, the jumpsuit was actually one that he wore uh, during the filming of Game of Death, which was the very last movie that he filmed. He didn't even complete filming it before tragically passing away in 1973. Uh, from an interaction with some medication that he was taking. Uh, he passed away in 1973 without finishing the film. It was actually that footage was brought together with some future footage and finally released in 1979. And the yellow and black jumpsuit that he was wearing became synonymous with him and his character. Uh, Bruce Lee really became an icon in Asian American culture, specifically because of how he brought the portrayal of Asians forward in film. Before uh, his films, they were really often just portrayed as the bowing, humble servant, uh, very emasculated characters. Uh, but with his films, he brought Asians forward as the heroes and much stronger characters. And so for that, he's still very fondly remembered among Asians. Uh, now, the yellow and black jumpsuit, fun story behind it. Uh, you would think that there was just some deeper meaning behind it. The reason that he chose the yellow jumpsuit was specifically because there was a scene in Game of Death where he was fighting against uh, basketball superstar Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who... Who knew that that guy knew martial arts? Uh, but in one of the scenes, uh, Kareem kicks him in the chest and this big footprint uh, is supposed to show up on the jumpsuit. And he chose yellow specifically so that footprint would show up on his chest. Uh, so fun facts about Bruce Lee and the inspiration behind this deck, but let's jump into it, find out how it comes to life in the deck. Now, like a lot of Brad Fulton's designs, it's a really simple, clean design. The tuck case is this matte yellow cardstock and all of the ink here is black foiled ink. You can kind of see that if I get that in the light. Has Fulton's in this flowery script at the top and then Chinatown playing cards. You have the dragon down there, a classic symbol in Chinese culture, uh, represents prosperity and strength. And then you have this, what's called a meander pattern going all the way around these curling uh, shapes here, meant to kind of resemble clouds going all the way around the edge. You'll see that a lot in Chinese culture. Uh, on the sides, you got Fulton's Chinatown, Los Angeles, California. So the address of the fictional location, along with that pagoda design at the top. And the other side distributed by the D&D Playing Card Company in Hollywood. Uh, the bottom, mentioned that these are printed on the Cambric 37 stock from USPCC, made in the USA. And you have the Chinese symbol for a Chinese dragon right there. Uh, the top just has Fulton's in script and then you have more of that kind of ornamentation on the inner flap here. As you flip this up, you've got Game of Death, the name of this edition. Another repeated uh, Chinese dragon symbol and it's reflected on the other side. And then if you open up the flaps on the inside, there's in inverse colors, this little octagon here. Uh, this is actually the feng shui, it's called the bagua. Uh, the bagua is basically just a wheel that you can use in feng shui, where this is this idea that you can position objects in a way to achieve harmony and balance in your life. So that's what that uh, oct octagonal symbol is there. Uh, the interior of the tuck is just that yellow with black on one side. And you can see down in there, there is a dragon printed on the bottom. I'm not sure if that's intentional or just reflected from the other side, uh, but there is a dragon that you can kind of make out there at the bottom. Uh, so that is the tuck case. Very clean, simple, uh, much like a lot of Brad Fulton's designs. Uh, now going to the back design of the cards, and here it is. Uh, features, of course, lots more of that yellow and black and then a really beautiful ornate design. A lot more detail on this back design than a lot of the Brad Fulton designs. Uh, you, of course, have the dragon on the top and the bottom, symbolizing, again, prosperity and strength. Uh, and then lots of 
detailed ornamentation uh, and more of that meander pattern twisting through in the center. Uh, and then finishing out with that border. I love that sunburst effect that you get through the center. And then finishes out with a medium, almost on the thick side of a white poker border. Uh, so really nice back design to the cards. I love the yellow and the black and the look of those two together. Uh, extra cards, you do get an image of Bruce Lee. So two identical jokers. Uh, and it's Bruce Lee doing a flying jump kick and wearing that iconic jumpsuit. It's actually reverse colors. The actual jumpsuit was yellow with a black stripe. This one's black with a yellow stripe to give that silhouette uh, look to it. And then you get the look of him in that jumpsuit doing a flying jump kick and it's reflected on the other side. So both of them identical. A little look at Bruce Lee there. Uh, two other extra cards you get. You do get one ad card, uh, kind of a credits card. Uh, this is very similar to the one that's included in a lot of the Brad Fulton decks, but it mentions designed by Brad Fulton, illustrated by Dan Phillips, and of course produced by Dan and Dave Buck. And you get a double backer. Uh, now the cards themselves are going to be uh, mostly standard, but you do get a custom Ace of Spades, says the D&D playing card company at the bottom, and you have this image of a of a flaming dragon wrapped around a Chinese lantern. Uh, all done in black and white, very much a sketched looking design. You can see just sort of some of the imperfections in the lines, which I think give it a lot of character, but a really cool drawing of the dragon there. Uh, have a pretty standard pip and index in the corner, nothing too special there. And the pips and indices across all of the number cards are gonna be completely bicycle standard. So no customization there. Uh, you do get a slight, and I do mean very slight, recoloring of the core cards. They've removed some of the blue that you'll see on a classic bicycle deck and just had this red, yellow, and black design to the court cards. So otherwise, no real customization there. It's meant to be a highly functional and usable deck. Uh, the red cards are in a classic bright red and the court cards for the red cards no different than what we're looking at with the black cards. There's the two of them side by side. Maybe a little more black in some of the uh, black core cards, but pretty much the same coloring. There's your clubs, down through the clubs. Like I said, these are all bicycle standards, so not too much to see on these. And into the hearts. Flipping down through the heart number cards and finishing out with the ace of hearts. Uh, as far as handling, I will say this is an older deck, so take it with a grain of salt. I uh, had this one and it's and it's been opened. Uh, for me now, it's a little bit clumpy on the uh, on the fans and the cuts. It does handle nicely. You know, I don't have too many complaints with it, but it's not as smooth as a deck right out of the tuck. And I will say for me personally, I've noticed that with some of the Cambric 37 decks, that once they've been open for a while, they do kind of lend a clumping, even if like this one, they're very, very lightly used. Uh, so not the best fanning deck in the world, but they do still feel nice in hand, still shuffle, cut very nicely. Gonna handle, you know, not too, not too badly at all. Uh, so that is the deck. I really do like the uh, tribute to Bruce Lee that's paid in this deck. I love getting a chance to kind of read a little bit about Bruce Lee's history. Uh, you know, I would love to see a more highly customized version of this deck, maybe with some more customized courts or more heavily recolored courts. That said, that's not Brad Fulton's style. His style is simplicity done incredibly well. I think he's one of the one of the lines of his that I absolutely love is that is one of the hardest things to do is a simple deck. Uh, and I think that really shows in this one is a really well executed classic deck. Uh, usefulness of it, you could, you know, if you're if you're better at handling cards, I suppose, or better at fanning them, I, I'm sure these would be great for cardistry. Uh, but really, to me, it's obviously a collector's deck because of its rarity now, uh, but really just a deck that you would love to use for gameplay. I think it's really going to add an extra little bit of flair and be a highly useful deck for gameplay or for magic in my mind. I think that's really where this one finds its home. Just a definitely a functional deck. Uh, so that's it. That is the look at the Fulton Chinatown playing cards from Brad Fulton and the Dan and Dave playing card company. 
Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, let me know what other decks you want to see in the future, whether they be new decks or even some throwback decks that I may have in my collection. Uh, make sure you subscribe for more deck reviews and unboxings, and I'll see you for the next one.